Thank you for uh, this uh, opportunity to present Elisera Therapeutics. My name is uh, Jamal Mosle and I'm the CEO. Elisera Therapeutics is a uh, cell and gene therapy company in uh, clinical stage, developing next generation armed cancer treatments based on CAR T cell therapies and oncolytic viruses. Uh, two of the co-founders you see on the picture here, they have developed a broad portfolio for Elisera, today consisting of uh, five assets, uh, two CAR-T programs, two oncolytic virus uh, assets, and one iTank technology platform te uh, that we use to arm uh, CAR-T cells in order to make them circumvent some of the challenges that they face in treatment of solid tumors. Uh, you see our pipeline here. You see that we have uh, two programs in uh, clinical stage. Uh, the most advanced is ELC-100, uh, which is an oncolytic virus we have developed specifically for treatment of neuroendocrine tumors. And we uh, just uh, quite recently included the last patient in a dose escalation trial of a total of 12 patients. So we expect to report data from this trial in the beginning of, uh, in the first half of next year. ELC-301 is our uh, second clinical program. It's a, a CAR-T candidate that we have developed for treatment of uh, B-cell lymphoma. It's armed with the iTank platform, and we just a couple of weeks ago uh, included the first patient in this clinical study that I will talk more about shortly. We have two very exciting preclinical programs in 401 and 201. 401 is a CAR-T candidate in glioblastoma, and 201 is an oncolytic virus that we have developed for treatment of solid tumors. Uh, both of them uh, have been armed with the ITIN platform. Going back to CAR-T cell therapies, we can mention that this is a type of immunotherapy, meaning that it uses the patient's own immune system to fight cancer. And there are different ways of, of doing this, and CAR-T cell therapies have been shown to be one of the more promising ways to treat cancer since long-term studies have shown that the patients that have been followed for over 10 years, some of them are still uh, tumor-free, and they have an intact immune system against cancer, which indicates that uh, these therapies have uh, curative potential. This has led to six approved CAR-T therapies, but all of them have been, been approved in blood cancer. None have yet been approved in solid tumors. The solid tumor space is about 10 times bigger than blood cancer, and of course, there, there's where you have the highest unmet medical need, and of course, the largest uh, commercial potential. Now, the reason that CAR-T therapies haven't been approved in treatment of solid tumors is because a solid tumor poses certain challenges that blood cancers doesn't pose for these types of treatments. Number one, uh, CAR-T uh, uh, solid tumors uh, carry a very heterogeneous antigen expression, which means that it's difficult to find a CAR target antigen that is overexpressed on all tumor cells. This will ultimately lead to some of the tumor cells uh, escaping CAR T attack and forming CAR T resistant metastasis. This issue you don't have in, in blood cancer. Uh, also, a solid tumor has a very immunosuppressive tumor marker environment that uh, exhausts the CAR T cells, makes them less viable and less effective, but also makes it difficult for the CAR T cells to penetrate the tumor. And for us uh, to solve these challenges, we are arming our CAR-T cells with a uh, technology we call iTank, which includes a bacterial-derived protein from Helicobacter pylori. And the whole idea with using this bacterial-derived protein is that the patient's immune system will naturally react to it as something that is foreign and that should be attacked and destroyed. So the patient will mount a parallel immune response in parallel to your CAR-T attack. And what we aim to achieve with this is to activate the patient's own killer T cells against multiple targets on the tumor, not just the target that the CAR T is going after. This pro-inflammatory environment that this uh, parallel immune response uh, activates and creates actually directly counteracts the immunosuppressive tumor marker environment in solid tumors and leads to less exhaustive uh, CAR T cells, meaning that it makes them more viable. We have... Uh, published preclinical proof of concept data in a high impact uh, scientific journal, Nature Biomedical Engineering in 2022, where we could show uh, that we can turn a, so, so to speak, immunologically cold tumor into an immunologically hot tumor, which is exactly what you're after in immune oncology. We can show a broad attack on multiple targets. We can show that this doesn't add any toxicity in comparison to unarmed CAR T cells. And we also have data where we have compared uh, the efficacy of iTank armed CAR T cells with unarmed, 
in different mouse models. And regardless of choice of mouse model, choice of indication, or choice of target antigen, we always see a prolonged survival, some mice even being cured, and also a reduced tumor growth in the mice that have been treated with i 10 armed CAR T cells. So we have, uh, uh, of course, we're using the i 10 platform on our own CAR-T therapies, but the fact is that most of the companies that are developing CAR-T therapies in solid tumors, they don't have a solution for the two challenges that I, um, I just mentioned. So we would like to offer the i 10 platform to other CAR-T developers, and it's agnostic to other genetic modifications you've done to your CAR-T therapy. It also doesn't matter what type of uh, target uh, antigen that the, the CAR-T is going after. You can still use the i platform. So our ambition is to secure multiple licensing deals for this platform. Uh, and for the other drug candidate programs, of course, we want to, to license it exclusively uh, to, to global partners. We are also looking for um, academic collaborations, and so far we have three academic collaborations in different areas of the world and also in different uh, areas of application. So the i tank can be used in, in CAR-T therapies, like we're doing with um, a Spanish research institution, but it can also be used in TCR therapies, uh, which is a, a collaboration we have with a cancer research institute in, in the US in solid tumors, all of them preclinical. And we also have a collaboration with the Chinese University Hospital that are using our next generation oncolytic virus with the ITIN platform, also in, in different solid tumor uh, mouse models. So the KARMA study that we recently initiated is in B-cell lymphoma. Uh, in this indication, you actually already have three approved CAR-T therapies, but all of them are approved against CD19, not CD20, which we are targeting. And about half of the patient, <clears throat> even though these uh, therapies are very effective, half of the patient you can count on will relapse and will no longer be able to treat with your standard CD19 therapies. So this is the initial patient population that we're going after. And as I mentioned, uh, ELC301 targets CD20, and it's also armed with the i platform. So we think that we can uh, mount an attack of the immune system against other targets besides CD19 and CD20. Uh, this study is in 18 patients in total, uh, 12 patients will be in a dose escalation phase, and 6 patients in dose expansion. And important to mention is that of these 18 patients in total, we will have 12 patients with max dose, which we believe is an adequate number to draw uh, adequate uh, conclusions on efficacy and safety at this stage. Uh, this is an open trial, uh, so we will be able to report data throughout the trial, and the first uh, uh, instance that we intend to report data is from the first cohort of three patients in the lowest dose group uh, sometime in the first half of, of next year. Looking at the 401 program, this is a CAR-T candidate that we have developed for treatment of glioblastoma. And we believe this is a, a very relevant um, indication for the i platform in a CAR-T candidate because um, glioblastoma is a very aggressive type of tumor. It's very heterogeneous in its uh, antigen expression, and it also has a very immunosuppressive and aggressive tumor marker environment. So uh, we believe that the i platform can make a difference in this group of patients. And important to mention also is that the target that we are going after is a target that has been validated by other groups. So we are using a target that has shown in previous clinical studies, in very few cases, some patients that have, have uh, managed to reach complete response. Uh, unarmed CAR T cells. The difference is that it's unarmed, which means that these patients will likely not be able to eradicate all tumor cells with these CAR T cells therapies, which you also see because they get relapses very, very quickly. So we hope to be able to, to help that type of, of patients with um, uh, 401. We're looking for partners and or soft funding to drive this uh, program into clinical phase. Now lastly, on the two oncolytic virus programs uh, that I mentioned briefly in the beginning of this presentation, ELC100 in nevroendocrine tumors. Uh, we are just about to finish a dose escalation trial in 12 patients. Uh, data report expected in first half of 2025. This is the only program that we haven't armed with the i platform. So in contrast, ELC201 is armed with the, with the i platform, but it's also armed with another immune-stimulating substance in 41BBL to further stimulate the T cells. So when I look at ELC201 as an oncolytic virus, I actually look at it almost like two products in one. You have your oncolytic virus, but you also have your 
like a therapeutic cancer vaccination with the ITAN platform. Uh, and this is in, in solid tumors in general, so you're not restricted to treat uh, any specific uh, uh, indication here. So going forward, we have um, uh, quite interesting news flow, we believe, the coming 12 months. Uh, two of them we've already uh, reached, uh, two of the milestones. Uh, one of them, of course, being that we have initiated the KARMA study now. First patient has been treated and patient recruitment is ongoing. Uh, the ELC 100 study, we call it the ADVIN study, the, that one will be reported in the first half of next year, but the last patient was recently included also. And then we have some potential news flows from the ITANK collaboration discussions that we have with uh, uh, different companies that might be interested in using the ITANK platform with their CAR-T candidates in, in solid tumors. So hopefully we may be able to report some news from, from those talks as well. And uh, as I mentioned before briefly, 401 and 201, we're looking for partnerships and or soft funding to drive these programs into clinical trials. So with that, thank you so much and uh, be happy to answer some questions. Thank you, Jamal. Um, nice, we will start up with uh, financial questions, or financial, but uh, about sales. What level of peak sales are we talking about? Oh, that's, uh, that's a difficult uh, question to answer. Uh, depends on the data, depends on the pricing, uh, depends on what, uh, what type of uh, market share you, you think you might uh, be able to secure uh, after having approved one of these products. But uh, hopefully it's, uh, it will be a blockbuster. Mm -hmm. How much have you talked about these different factors? I mean... Yeah, I, have, I guess you have thought about this. We, we have. I mean, we have uh, uh, company coverages that we use, uh, company analysis, where you have um, uh, people um, looking at these types of exercises and counting on them. We've, of course, uh, done some of that ourselves, but it's not something that I want to, to release at, at this moment. I understand that. Um, let's talk about the patients, because you said earlier in your presentation, like, we hope to make a change. I think all of us in this room is why we are in this business, you know, outside of the, the money. Um, can you describe a little to me, what do you hope that you can give these patients that now have started their treatment and that you will see results from? I mean, if everything goes in according to plan. I mean, so I have to be careful in answering this question because I also don't want to raise uh, expectations too much. But uh, as I've already presented uh, before here, CAR T-cell therapies have curative potential. They have shown curative potential in this indication. So I would hope that we are able to, to present some patients that, have, uh, that we, we've been able to, to help reach that stage as well, mm. uh, to actually being cured. But, but I have to mention also that this is a dose escalation trial. So we start off with a very small dose, and we increase as we go along. And of course, you can expect uh, stronger efficacy signals as you increase doses. Mm. I mean, you're careful, and I like that that's also on some front. But if you take the time to be a little bit like visionary about the, the long-term vision and goal for Elisera, what do you see then? Well, then I hope we can uh, actually cure many of the patients that today are not being cured by the CD19 CAR-T therapies that are currently approved, but of course also to be able to enter the solid tumor space. And, and they're not only Elisera, but we hope to be able to help other companies do that as well. Mm. Thank you so much for your presentation and joining us here today. Thank you.